This is a view from the bridge, official podcast of the Belfast Giants for KingdomOfTheGiants.com. Today's Tuesday, the 25th of January, 2022. My name's Patrick Smith. First of all, big hello to the fans of the Glasgow clan and the Cardiff Devils, who have no doubt popped along for one show. But, you know, <laughs> welcome, lads. Welcome, lads. Stick with us. I'm glad to see you. A sport has its highs and its lows. No team wins forever. And so it seems... For the Giants, who picked up two points from the possible six of the last week. Uh, in this week's show, we've two defeats you know, that they brought the streak to the end. And uh, and there was the recovery against the Flames. We'll look at all the action. We'll also have the news from around the league. And the head coach, Adam Keefe, is our guest on the fan agenda answering your questions. Mr. McJimsey, you well? Good evening. Not too bad. The, nice uh, new the hat. Yeah, nice thanks, hat. Thanks to Jason Taff Ellery. I, uh, we nod to him for that one. Mr. Kitchen, keep him well. You know, we we trip over to Glasgow again. I, I took a photograph of you on the stream. <laughs> it was it was so wholesome. It's like that that group chat's normally just us raking the bag out of each other. And Paddy's like, "Is is that you?" Says says comes back. Like, yeah, you're like, "We have we have trick." Don't wave. Trick. <laughs> you can see the wave on the bench. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's it's forgot about that. It's so like wholesome. Two hours, two hours before face off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was two hours before? Why I was watching the stream two hours before face off is anybody's guess. But there was says, give him a wave. Value for money, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, they're doing them now, may as well. And uh, Joel Neal, he hasn't gone to Warren Point. He's uh, he's joined us on the on the on a view from the bridge. How are you doing, mate? Take on the team, mate. Yeah, made a miraculous COVID recovery, um, and I'm not standing freezing in Milltown right now. So nice to be with you as always, please. <laughs> uh, right, gents, we're going to let's get stuck into these games because obviously, as I said, the Belfast Giants <clears> only took three games in the last week and not as successful as they've been over the last couple of weeks, but a bit of a recovery towards the end. We start, of course, with the game last Wednesday in Glasgow against the Glasgow clan. It was a 3 1 win for the home team. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Uh, the Giants opened the scoring in the first period with David Goodwin from Lake and Bomb, seven minutes in, maybe eight minutes in. Uh, nothing in the second period. And then, unfortunately, it was a power play goal, an even strength goal, and an empty net goal as Laporte, Wa, and Saul made it 3 1 to the Glasgow clan. In goals for the Belfast Giants, Jackson Whistle, 22 saves, two goals against. And Shane Start for the Glasgow clan, 30 saves. Uh, one goal against your referees were Robin Elliott and Toby Craig. David, um, despite the early goals, the Giants struggled to get a hold of the game. Um, I felt through the first, I guess, half hour of the game, like we created more than enough to, to win more than one game of hockey. Um, better in the face-off circle. I chanced them massively, I think, um, through the first 40 minutes we had nearly 30 grade A chances and execution. I think uh, the coach might have said that himself. We just didn't execute on the night and that, you know, if you don't and, and you let a team hang in there, which the clan did, the clan blocked 27 shots um, on the night. They hung in there, waited for their opportunity to come along. And, and when it came along, they took their opportunity. Um, the goal, the goal we scored ourselves, if you're putting it up there, you know, a real hard work from Bomber on the four on four gets, gets right up the ice. Beats, beats a defend, defenseman on a foot race and, and creates a bit of a turnover. Ben Ray comes in and, and finds, um, who was it? It was Goody, Goody, Captain David Goodwin at the back post. Put his one up and nothing less than we really deserve. But yes, yeah, stickability, I guess, from the Glasgow clan. They hung in there doggedly. Um, as I say, lay down in front of everything. It was shot, it started. Anything that got through, did pretty gone, well. Mate. Just keep going, keep going. And um, hope that he comes back. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I felt that the Belfast... Now, nah, we'll have to start again because... He'll not have the recording, surely. He will still live, still recording. Ah, well, well, then they can either de delete that wee bit out, or people will know that he's he's disappeared. But um, well, we're know. hijacking the show. Ah. Well, this is this is it. This is our show now, Paddy. I'm sorry, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> um, so we don't know whether I kept recording or not. But if it did, it was great content. Okay, <laughs> it did. It did keep recording, and it will be okay. part of the show. Well, so. well, I I just what he called. I I, I kind of paused there because I wasn't sure whether he had disappeared. But it was just saying, you know, I thought that carried the play and. You know, I don't know what 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 Simon or, or Joel think there, but for me, forty minutes good, and then whenever they got back into it, the last ten minutes, we just we just failed to create anything at all to get ourselves back in the game. Simon, you know, you were there on the bench and w watching the game. How did you feel, man? Just at the balance, just as Davey said, it, it, 
you know, I thought that at times we played really, really well. But as the game went on, I genuinely thought we actually looked a bit tired. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we played a lot of hockey over the last few weeks. And, and um, you know, yeah, we get the goal. They, they, I thought the clan actually played pretty well. Um, I know we're always, you know, looking to have a go at them. But compared to what they've seen them earlier this season, they, 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 they definitely did step it up. They got the power play goal on a 5-1-3. Um, and... The second penalty to make it the five on three, which is only I think it was twelve seconds into the first one, for me it's got to be a nailed on penalty for a five on three. I thought that was harsh. Uh, I don't, you know, if you're are you going to call it a five on four, you're going to call it as a penalty. Do you know what you probably do, but I thought it was really really harsh to get it. Um, you know, to basically you have to end up having to go down to a five on three, which is really, really tough. The boys in the third period, and once the clan got yeah. that goal, they sort of you know, they they sort of galvanized them a wee bit and, and they started to pick up. You know, they they got that rollicking off the, the coach the week before after I can't remember who it was beat them, um, but he was wasn't very complimentary to them. And and to be honest, I think I put a bit of uh, a bit of a fire in their camp and 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 they started to pick up because the next game off that was against Dundee and they beat Dundee away. And then they played us, and they came in with a bit of confidence. And now they're on four in a row, so you know they're they're on a bit of a roll as well. So they're you know hopefully you know we don't play them for any for a couple of weeks, but hopefully um, you know they start to pick up um, wins against teams that we need them to pick up wins against as well. But uh, you know, bottom line is I don't think we did enough to win the game. We didn't have that. You know, I don't know how many great A chances are on the on the end stats, David. But you know, it's it's one of those ones where Start did what he had to do. Um, Jackson was unlucky, not, you know, you get a five on three, it's a difficult one. It's a one on one, yeah. you know, basically one on the goalie when, when Waz coming in. Does he take, does he have control of that puck when you're coming over the line? You know, pucks trailed in behind him. I don't I think, think so. he did. You know, I so, think he did, but <laughs> listen, we, we talked about it the week before. You've got to have that puck block going for the last month, six weeks. We've had that puck block. Yeah. Probably didn't get it last Wednesday night. Um, but as I say, I, I, I can't really complain about the, the overall um, result because the guy, the guy, the you've you've you know, go undefeated in December in the league, start the season or start January off really really well as well. Anybody complaining about the way things and again sometimes it just doesn't go your way. So Wednesday night was one of them nights. If I can just jump straight into the, the, on cool. that, Paddy, just on what Simon's saying there. There's no, uh, no, nobody is is entitled to win in this league. There are no easy games in the EIHL, and just because the Giants were were on uh, a bit of a run and, and we're doing well and we're scoring, it doesn't mean that you're going to roll into Glasgow midweek and and pick up that win. That's a team that are also playing a lot of hockey. We talked a few weeks ago about how uh, it was strange that Tim Wallace said, you know, we don't even have time to practice here. We're just playing so many games. Whenever pretty much every other coach says that the best form of practice is playing hockey games, getting out there and doing it. And goodness me, they're doing that right now. You know, they've got a midweek or every week. They've got what like average of three games a week at the minute. And um, I really rate Malcolm Cameron. Uh, I like the guy's personality. He's a bit nuts, which I'm also a big fan of. Uh, don't really dig the Brill Cream wet look, but that's on him, whatever. Um, but they're they're coming in uh, on a roll as well, playing a lot of hockey. They've got their backs up against the wall. They're trying to respond after having a tough time. Belfast have come out of uh, what Adam Keefe called an emotional win against the Cardiff Devils last weekend in a packed barn. And you're suddenly on a Wednesday night in the cold and dark in Glasgow in an arena with 200 people facing a team that are pissed off. You know, sometimes there are other factors that mean it's just not going to go your way. On the ice, I think we paid the price for, for obviously, the poor discipline of, of the five on three, whether you think it was the right call or not. Um, and also, you know, there was a golden opportunity in the third, I think, Matt Haywood got called for maybe a trip or something. Um, but but obviously, the, the power play hasn't been firing that hot. And, and it's kind of a theme that I guess we'll talk about through the three games. But um, we're, we're just not picking up those, those chances. Actually, we're not picking up the zone time on the power play, I think, is the issue. We seem to spend a lot of time trying to get set up and, and not really getting many shots shots away um, and I think the the lack of power play effectiveness um, sort of cost us late in that game there were a couple of chances we could look back into it but listen um, we have been golden for for however many games that was what did it finish on 11 or 12 was it 12 12 I mean the law of averages sometimes you're just gonna have a bad night and you're gonna lose a hockey game uh, a couple of defeats we're still within three points there's uh there's no alarm bells ringing here let me just pick up on a point briefly 
David, it says, made about the, and you brought it up on our WhatsApp about the Matthew Wah taking control into the zone. There's a bit of an iffy moment there in regards to whether he had control. Was he ahead of the puck carrying it? Says, says he didn't think he was. You say you don't think he was? I don't think he was because he, he, he yes, he, he precedes the puck into the zone, which is okay as long as you're in control of the puck. To me, he gets the, his first touch of the puck is behind him and he, he drags it in the zone, but he doesn't have, he, he then has to sort of, Half check back, look for the puck and get it back on this stick. We you talked about the one <coughs> I remember picking. Oh, what do you call him? Blue Rod- Blue Rodeo, Jim Heaney. Yep, picking him and the daughter up in the city center and driving the Sheffield, missing like the first period of the game in Sheffield and just getting there in time for Theo Fleury to score that goal. You know, the one Ed Courtney's gone read all about backhand it. length of the ice. Theo's took it in left handed, skating sort of half backwards. Gets it on one time. So Jody Lehman in Nets, maybe? Yes. Um, uh, so, like, uh, an all-star cast, the Sheffield Steelers hat, and Theo scores a wonder goal. That's the only one that I could we could really think of where that's happened. But Theo mm-hmm. had it strongly under control, drags it right in front of him, gets the wrist shot away. Wah completely loses control of puck and has to get it. So if he doesn't have control of puck, to me it was offside. But time talks about puck luck. They'll go, some go for you, some yep. go against you. And yep. If it had been blown up, I don't think anybody's coming back here now and saying, oh, that was a terrible decision. Go for you to go against you. We can't complain. We've had some puck luck, as Simon says, over the last few weeks. So, you know, you're right when you have it and smoke them when you got them. Absolutely. Well, like I said, <laughs> like I said he's right. The, he's right. The, the, we'll move on. The uh, the highlights in that game are from Clan TV. And uh, well done to the guys we get in there. It was the first time we've had the stream from Glasgow and uh, entertaining as it was as well, apart from the scoreline. Um, and we move and Je- on. And, Je- and Jeff Baum. Jeff Baum. After all, Jeff Baum the, the text that Craig and said, it's like Jeff Baum, the being <laughs> silent, like the, like the pee and swimming. <laughs> <laughs> He's on fire tonight. <laughs> the, um, let's, move, let's move on. Gents, we move on to the game that took place on Saturday at Ice Arena Wales behind closed doors. And that was against the Cardiff Devils, a 4-1 win for the Devils, despite the Belfast Giants getting their only goal through Griffin Reinhardt. In 1722, it was a short handed goal, a power play goal, an even strength goal, and an empty netter. So, a royal flush for the Cardiff Devils as Davis Reed Cooler uh, Cooler scores the empty netter as well, make it 4 1. Um, Tyler Beskarani and that's the Giants 24 shots against three goals against a Matt Carew, 40 shots against one goal against Matt Thompson, Stefan Hogarth. Um, <coughs> Says just the early point and the early parts of this game, there was obviously a bit of you know anticipation of the Giants wanting to get into it. I thought this started well. Uh, I mean, again, look, uh, to be honest, I thought this game. I mean, I watched the first um period and a half back on on late, late Saturday night. Um, you know, it's never easy when you give up a short handed goal. Um, it's sort of you, the you know, you, you're you're basically putting the pressure on them their end, um, and then you sort of just, you know, when you, it, it deflates you. Um, we didn't get any energy from it, you know. Uh, you, you know, Ben Davies gets a, a you know goes length the ice and scores that, and Furnace was a really good finish uh, past Besco, and then they get a power play effort, um, and again, it, it it just makes it, you know, behind the black ball, and 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 you know. Going in the car is always tough. We we know that um, when they would have been hurting after the week before. So, you know, to get that goal back at the end, towards the end of the first period, sort of give us a bit of hope. But that was it. I didn't think we turned up the other two periods. Yes, we had a couple of chances, but I don't think we did enough to do that game. And I know Adam was really disappointed, you know, and he was definitely looking for a reaction suddenly. But, you know, it, it's you, you, you beat against Glasgow um, on, the, uh, on the Wednesday night. You were hoping for a reaction in Cardiff. It's a tough, tough place to go to. But, Dave, I mean, you, you, I know it was behind closed doors, but you got a better view than most, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed well, to have yeah. a bit of a secret. Yes, Mark Drakeford, the oh, sorry, uh, my bad. The, the, Welsh, the Welsh first minister said no, knack, actually, but I said, You've built a bridge and I ain't going over it. So um, off we went. But look, as you've said, like you can almost repeat what you said about the Glasgow game. For the first 20 minutes, we carried that game. We were dominant, bar a couple of little mistakes. 
the one that the turnover and you've said brilliant finish and the the power play against us we controlled zone 10 the only thing we didn't control in that first 20 minutes of the game was the face-off circle we were pretty much dominated on the night um but in terms of of chances and good chances we got down low, but we didn't put real any real pressure on Curry. Like he's had now had four games against us and has been their man of the match four times. Um and we haven't we didn't really trouble him um that much. Reinhardt coming up with a really good goal to keep us in it at the end of the first period because we definitely deserved to come out of that period with something. But after that, we coughed a really bad puck up for them to score their third goal. Um, you know, those little individual errors that went against us on the night. And once you're 3-1 behind in Cardiff, then you have to chase the game. And they just kept us outside. They just kept us the perimeter all night. If you look at our shot chart, it says if you have it, if you've got the instat, everything's from top of the circles and from outside. We didn't get inside at all worth talking about. And if you don't get inside in Carruth, you, we, you look at the goal that Soise scored the other the other week in Belfast. It was one of the very few times, I think it's Boucher, feeds him in and he gets inside and gets a shot away over the glove. If you don't get in tight on him and get shots, he's going to save it. As we say this about all the goalies in this league, if they are go- if they see it, they save it. Very few goalies in this league get goals in, pucks in. Even the goal there that Reinhardt scores, there's a semi-screen going across him. The puck's moved from, I think, down low in the corner from Coops, who had a great weekend. By the way, Reinhardt, final match on Saturday night, an easy pick. I assume Todd Callum picked it, but like I was I was wondering who he's going to pick. thought it could only be Reinhardt and right enough it was. That being said... Four goals against, one being an empty netter. I don't think Besco did an awful lot wrong. Um, can't really do much with the, Mark, the the Ben Davies goal. Second one on the power play and the third one, it's a bang-bang from, you know, somebody cut out in front of him and, and the puck's been given up and it's bang-bang from the blue paint. So I thought Besco had a good game again. Curry, again, we've said, you know, good enough. But we did enough in the first 20 minutes to be well ahead in that game. And again, we just... A bit like the, the what you said in the in the Glasgow game, or Simon started to reiterate. We kind of looked leggy, and that once we got behind, we just didn't have that zip to get back in the game. And an awful lot of games, an awful, I know Joel has said there as well about practices or games of the best form practice as well. But at this level, you also need vast stretches of rest, rest, yeah. rest, recovery, water, food, blah blah blah, so on and so on. The traveling catches up on you, and, and I think to an extent, the, the bit of travel ca- caught up on us, and we had to then regroup again and go to London. Joel, I think you know, David took it and says, Take us through as well. As well, it, it, with the chance getting away from what has made what made the last little streak successful, do you think that we weren't playing in a, in a means that, that, that were getting us the goals pri- previously? I think the Giants know what they need to do to be successful. And, and I think that the, the systems uh, sort of implemented by Adam Keefe work. It's just that this entire game, save for maybe a, a you know decent in the first period, I think, honestly, we came out in the second and we're much sharper in terms of our passing and stuff as well. You know, we, we were going tape to tape. We were moving really well. Um, but apart from that sort of spell, uh, it's not that they're getting away from what they need to do. It's just that it wasn't in them on the night. You know, I think the thing that I kept seeing is just that we weren't at the races at all. You know, you're away uh, in another empty building, a tough uh, road game uh, against a tough team. There was obviously that extremely uh, sort of intense uh, win in Belfast the week uh, the week before. The Devils were coming out, and you know they're they're now used to playing behind closed doors. Uh, I'm not saying that the crowd makes you win or lose a game, but it certainly adds something if you're used to it or if you're not used to it. Um, and they were coming out for revenge. And, and let's be real. I mean, they, they did most of their, their work in the first half hour. That game was kind of dead and buried in the late 20 minutes. And um, as Davey said, the, you know, the remainder of that second period after their uh, third goal, I think it was, uh, there wasn't even a penalty. Um, I think we were just kind of run ragged. We just looked tired. Um, it, it was very attritional, uh, trying to wear them down, trying to find your opportunities. But uh, just uh, we didn't have it in the tank is, is all I can really say. Um, look, no complaints. Sometimes you're, you're going to have uh, a night that doesn't go your way. Um, and thankfully, uh, we are looking at the points banked on the table. Uh, we don't have the the extra games played that the that the Cardiff Devils do. So I'm, I'm happy with with where we are, you know, to, to have come through that and to still be sitting that kind of three points off. I'm happy to let this one go and we'll reset and, and take them on again. Um, yeah, it just it is what it is. Uh, hate losing, hate losing to them especially. Um, but but it's just not your night. It wasn't the Giants. 
Davy? I think I, I think one of the, the things that will disappoint us when we look back on this season, no matter how it goes, successful or unsuccessful, to come out of zero and 3 and play so well for 3, 6, 7 of the 9 periods. Um, you know, I think out of the first two games, we definitely deserved a split, if not better, I lose, and then we got nothing out of the out of Saturday night, and probably deservedly so because you can't you can't play twenty minutes. Really, I'm not saying the boys played twenty minutes; they went to the end, but uh, consistently over the period. I think big turning point in the game, David Goodwin going out injured because that line of Goodwin, Pickenich, and Conway had been playing really nicely together, and it forced then Boucher was jumping up. They're different ones, so he was jumping up. Coops came up, you know. And then that that then obviously knocks their line out of shape as well, and you're getting no real continuity of, of forwards going going at the game. And when you lose your captain, no matter what happens, you you always have that little slump off. And I thought we carried, as I said earlier in the piece there, I thought we played really well in that first 20 minutes when Goody went out of the game. It did change the, the whole dynamic of, of our forward line. So, you know, you can look back and, and come up with reasons, excuses, call them whatever you want. But, you know, ultimately on the night, we just didn't get inside enough on the Devils. I, I, I Sorry for jumping in there, David. I think it, there's one thing that really pops to mind for especially against the Devils. And one thing they are very, very good at is game management. And yeah. you talk about, you know, we got a reasonably good start. Um, you know, they get the, the shorthanded goal. They did. How many grade A chances did we have in the third period, David? You know, they controlled it very, very well. They kept everybody outside. Carruth, again, he's, he's had a couple of good games against us for sure. That, that's my point. So, yeah. you know, when you're not getting the grade A chances, it makes it a hell of a lot more difficult. But the, the challenge that you have is, as I say, Coach Scaldi has got them playing really, really well. They're a smart, they're 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 an older team. Um, we've got the speed. There's no doubt about that. I'm definitely very confident that we're quicker than them. Um, but when they stop you skating, then it makes it a lot easier for them. They, they just so get big. in the lane. Yeah, they're big. But that's what I'm saying. They just they're get big. in your lane, and you know, there's there's a couple of guys who can get around them absolutely, but. It's all about the game management, and their game management on Saturday night was better than ours. That's I've no I've no complaints about it at all. When I watch the game back, I've, I've absolutely no complaints about the result. It's one of those ones where, you know, we we've got to play them two more times in Belfast. It's next week. Um, we've got to win those games. Yeah. Uh, but again, you you take one game at a time. The first two up against uh, the Coventry Bears this weekend. The most important one is Saturday. So like, uh, we 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 obviously are going to go on to talk about the Guildford game, which is a really good. Uh, jump back after after uh, the disappointing wins or sorry losses in in Glasgow and in uh, Cardiff, but um, I just thought that the the Devils played very very well and i just had that little bit of hockey smarts if you want to put it that way um, and that's what will name the game in my opinion. Yeah, I think says is bang on there in terms of game management. Whenever you said great A chances in the third, the only one I can remember is I think Cons squared it to Pekinich, who had a shot down the slot, which which sealed over with about six minutes left. Like that's that's all I can really remember. Um, but Paddy, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you boys a question. I've noticed kind of over the course of this season, especially, um, Adam Keefe seems to be probably the most aggressive in the league in terms of when he pulls the goalie and those kind of one goal down scenarios. You know, I think Besco was pulled to the bench with over three minutes left in that game. Um, and for a lot of people, it's really jarring and, and they're like, what, why, why are we doing this? What's going on? Um, I'm actually quite a fan of it. It's it's very much within the Adam Keith Keith ethos of hockey. Um, you know, it's taking the game by the throat and it's taking your chances and rolling the dice. But um, I wonder if you guys had kind of noticed or if you had any thoughts as to, as to its effectiveness or is there any stats to back it up? To be honest, I think you're asking the wrong. You're asking the wrong person. He's coming on with 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask That's him, but I, I go with the statistical analysis of it. If you like, then Joel. Not that I, I didn't know this question was coming, but if you look I didn't at that coming out, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> if, if if you look at power play versus penalty kill, roughly 80 percent, 20 percent, maybe some teams run 20, 25. So you get an extra man on one in five times. You'll get a you'll get a, a goal. So. 3-1 down, a couple of minutes to go, you roll the dice. 6 on 5 isn't as advantageous as 5 on 4 because there's not yeah. as much space in the defensive zone. So, but it's still, so it's marginally, so you might have a 15% chance of getting a goal. So why not roll the dice? Do you generally get two goals? Very rarely. I remember one very famous one, the Detroit Red Wings pulled it and Nicholas Lidstrom scored twice with the extra man. Panic tactics, as Panic our tactics. old erstwhile friend... Um, can't remember her name now. Sure. Um, something, yeah. Um, something, yeah. 
he used to say it was panic tactics pulling the goalie. It's not a panic tactic. It is a tactic, but the risk reward is that people. So their their risk is by shelling pucks at an empty net. If they miss, they they get an icing and mm -hmm. the the face off comes right back down in their zone. But you know the risk reward is they get a breakaway and score an empty netter. That's exactly the term I was going for. Was risk reward? Yeah. It was the, the idea that you know, what have you got to lose in in that scenario? You know, you need to get back into the game somehow. You have to give yourself the best chance to get back into the game. And yeah. you know, I, I, there are some people who hate it. There are some people who don't <laughs> see the point of it. But yeah. it's, it, but but the, the thing about hockey is it's a game of absolutes. The same, you know, you you either win or you lose. There are no ties in this game, so you may as well through what you can out there especially like you if there's a, you see people, <coughs> teams when there's a power play in the last minutes who will get go for the have the two extra men because you know you need to have those absolutes you need to have that goal you need to get into it and so ag aggressively pulling the goalkeeper fine by me i'm Especially certain like that i'm ahead, certain man. in paul in paul 80 season there was an away team coach pulled their goalie in the second pair like we're absolutely pumping them and pull the Was goalie in the challenge cup game. Mm. Can't remember Simon, but the pull the goalie in the second period. It may well have been. I have a funny of a feeling it was Tommy Stewart. Can't remember who it was, but maybe it was the second leg of a challenge cup, and it was like we've just got to throw the roll the dice here, get ourselves back in it before the end of the second period, or we're dead. And I think it doesn't see at the end of the day, you're getting big two one. You pull the goalie to try and get the you know the extra goal. It doesn't matter if you lose three one four one. Doesn't yeah. matter. Um, you know, especially with the position that we're in at the minute. I, I think Adam's 100% right. You just go for, you know, guts or glory. Just go as for the it. At the end of the day, sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. So well, it is what it is. Well, we're going but, to have him on. And we're going to have him on shortly. We, you can save that one up and ask it again, Joe. Uh, let's move on. You get the highlights excited. of that. Sorry, boys. Uh, you have highlights on that uh, on Devils TV if you want to watch them. And we move on to the, uh, to the game that took place on Sunday in Surrey against the Guildford Flames. I've just... Tried to pull up the wrong screen there, but let's fix this. Yes, so the game against the Guildford Flames and the Belfast Giants haven't lost two on the trot, looking to get back on the horse, and they did so with a plum. A 4 1 win for your Giants. It was the Guildford Flames who opened the scoring through Levi Cable in 13 53, but then a power play goal on 25 minutes from Jordan Boucher, Scott Conway on 36 minutes, Mark Cooper on 58 minutes, and then with just, over, just under 20 seconds to go, Sam Roop with the Empty net goal, uh, making a 4-1. Uh, Kevin Linsko can go for the Guildford Flames. 40 shots against, three goals against Tyler Beskarwani. 28 shots against, one goal against. Matt Thompson, Stefan Hogarth must have got the bus for the Giants because they were refereeing this game as well. Um, Joel, start with you. Tight start, but turned into more of what we want to see. Yeah, I, th I think the the beginning of the game. I think a lot of people, uh, uh, you see it, saw it on Twitter. Oh, here we go again. Obviously, we we go a goal behind. Uh, it just looked like things weren't going our way again. Um, you know, the things to pick up throughout that first period. I think shooting accuracy was a real issue for the Giants throughout the first. Um, and any time that I felt that we were gaining a little bit of momentum, there were a couple of, of kind of sloppy offsides as well. Um, again, the power play was a little bit uh, off. We were struggling for for his own time. Whenever Ferguson went for interference. Uh, about 10 minutes in um, and then obviously Ferguson came out of the box and, and managed to set up Cable who scored there first um, but the the character comeback that we saw from that second period on um, was extremely encouraging especially after another busy week and, and after so many games on the road like we've talked about I think we can all agree that I think because of the intensity and the number of games that the Giants maybe looked tired over the course of this past week um, but what you saw there was was them digging real deep uh, in the second period, they broke the power play skid. Um, they they grew into the game as, as the second period went on. Um, and then uh, that, that goal from Scott Conway to go 2-1 up uh, from almost, uh, what, like 180 degrees. He was he was beside the post, um, which they, I think they, the review they looked at, uh, I think, was to do with the, the net being off its moorings. But... Um, Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, but but it was it was fantastic to see us grow uh, into a game that we started uh, in a in a manner that, that we had seen earlier in the week. That shows character. That shows a team that cares about what they're doing, and it's a team that wants to get back to winning ways. And um, I think we we saw the the Giants that we've been more familiar with over the past couple of months for the remainder of that game. Davy Mark Cooper mm. thought he had a great game. I puts up the whatsapp or, or maybe says we, we were talking just as the the buzzer was going and i said coops for me man of the match i think says pick besco 
I thought Bersko was late, so uh, oh, he and was right, so and, and, and he, he, he actually made one save. It might have been in the third period, early in the third, where it's, well, it's you know, he's clubbed it and he's got sit well, down. And real momentum change in the game. There was still 1 1 at that point, and <laughs> or it might have been 2 1, can't remember. Um, it was really good, but for me, Cooper had a really strong weekend. Coops is still the one that's going to the net. He's still the one going into the dirty areas much more than anybody else. He, now, he's identified that himself, and that's his his role. When he was talking to us the other week, he said, that's what Adam wants me to do. That's what the coach wants me to do. I'm going to back in there, and that's what I'm going to do. But he got his reward with the goal, you know, the feed from Slater Dog got across to him, and he gets that that goal for us, which was crucial. And, and William Hill went, <laughs> but I went. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you know, it, it was good. Hell Look, hell. Guildford, Guildford came at us with a lot of speed. I, I'm yeah. not sure whether it was um, the coach said about, uh, you know, Adam Keith said about, you know, one of the fastest team of feet. One of the first times I've seen Griffin Reinhardt, maybe the first time I've seen Griffin Reinhardt, no, okay, at the stay in the game and he's he's probably tired. He's probably played well over 20 minutes on the night, beating a bit of a foot race back to the puck. But, you know, I was confident going into Guildford that there would be a bit more of a reaction after a couple of games that went against us and we got a reaction and we had to hang in there at times in that first period and, and we got the, the the equalizing goal and then the go ahead goal. I think the equalizer was on the power play. We're talking about was. the par the power play misfiring at times. T- twice in the same power play that opportunity comes down low to Bush where he can pull it out in front and get the shot. He's got the second opportunity on it and, and got a goal. Love to see that that kind of thing, you know, real stickability in front of the net. So you know I thought it was a really good win for us to get back on the horse after dropping a couple of games. You know, if you if you went back to the start of of that whatever it was 12 13 game winning streak and you'd punctuated those couple of losses within that, it wouldn't hurt as much as because you've gone flying at that. So not too concerned about the losses. We're still in a good position, We're still playing well. I talked about injuries over the last couple of weeks and how many games we we are nearly 70 import plus Ben Lake games then as well that he missed with the injury at the start of the season. 70, 80 games and a 30, 35 games we've played so far. Two guys a game down. We played a full strength Cardiff. We lost them on home ice. We played a full strength Glasgow. We lost them. This thing, it happens. You know, and we'll go back on a run again. We're well placed. Let's not just panic too much. Simon, you know, we did get the power play goal in the second period. Um, there weren't that many penalties in the game overall, but it it was a game where the Giants were able to find that scoring touch. Yeah, again, you I mean when you only scored when you well, sorry, you would only get the one against uh, Glasgow and the one against um, uh, Cardiff. But you, you look back in the previous four or five weeks, sorry, four yeah, four or five weeks, Davey will have a better idea how many goals to score, but it's well over forty. Um, you know, you, you're scoring seven against Nottingham, which sort of seems you know standard uh, nowadays. Um, um, you score five or six <laughs> against, um, I'm sorry, seven against Dundee on New Year's Eve. You get six against somebody else a couple of days later. Look, the scoring side of things, you can't have everybody, you know, going on one night. And our first line is very important. You know, when those guys are going, it really just seems everybody else to kick in and 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 they join the the uh, join onto the trail of it. And and I, th- I thought it was a really good response to the Cardiff game. Um, from the boys on on, on Sunday, I, I, I thought that. You know the, the first pair again, Adam. You're right, David. It was Adam that said that that um, you know that's the fastest team he's faced this season. And look, there's other teams in the league that just can't put up with our speed. But when you go the goal down, and again, there's, you see some of the fans on Twitter, you know, not happy about the way things are going. You know, calm down. They scored in the 13th minute. It's not 13 seconds to go, and you're one nil down. Like so, there was no doubt that we're going to respond back to that. Losing Goody in the Saturday night didn't help. Um, you know, you see him stand over the plexiglass watching the game from um, from the the uh, spectrum. And uh, but see, to be honest, see when we got that second goal, and although the Guildford Flames had opportunities, I didn't think we were going to lose because Besco was outstanding. Um, he, re- he he makes the big saves at crucial times. I mean, the start of the season, I think he'll hold his hands up. First of all, he was he was probably conceding one a game uh, for quite a few games and and gave goals that he would have wanted to take back. Um, but you know he was absolutely brilliant on Sunday, and it's one of those ones where it's uh, you sort of just keep going. You just knuckle down, stick your head down, and keep going. Coops was brilliant, Davy. I absolutely agree with you. I thought he played really, really well. You know that third goal when he sticks that big backside out, you know, to stop the guy getting the puck at him, throws it right across the slot, um, and it's hammered home. And then a really smart play, and then Sam Ruop gets a, an empty netter as well. So I thought we totally deserved the win on Sunday night. I thought that. 
you know, again, after a difficult week of, of the losses in Glasgow and Cardiff, um, it was a really good response. And now we've got four home games, uh, which boys can sleep in their own beds, prepare for the game at home, get their morning skates in, um, and let's just get ready to go for Coventry on Saturday. Paddy, can I ask, uh, sorry, just a, a follow-up on that from, from what says said. The, the third period really was the best Rowani show. Like, I mean, the, that, that sit-down glove save was spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Uh, but Simon, you, you see probably more of him than all of us. You, you've done a practice and whatever else. And I think you mentioned it during that game. He's somebody that is always just having so much fun when he's playing. Like, he's singing, dancing, like having, joking with people. Like, he, he stays really, really fast and loose. Like, he, he just seems to really enjoy playing hockey. Again, you're asking the wrong person to speak to him. <laughs> He's killing me today. That's <laughs> just like there's other goalies are just too tight. They know they're so nervous in the net, and Vesco is the complete opposite. He just, yeah. you know, just he'll just basically lean on the post like that most of the time. So it's um yeah, we're, we're hoping that, um, we're, we're Paddy asked earlier on could we get Vesco on the night, but I know he's he's uh and my daughter's babysitting for him tonight, so I know he's out. Um, not out too yet, obviously, Adam. But um, the uh, uh, yeah, oh, I'll be back by now. Somebody's in the background class. here. But also, you've just, you just made it sound as if you also just made it sound as if Kiefer's our second choice. Well, the second really choice is first choice. Is like... <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, uh, get, let's, let's get to it. Then. The uh, the highlights from that game available from Flames TV eventually. They're always take a while to get on YouTube. We're going to move on to the fan agenda. As we mentioned, we do have the head coach of your Belfast Giants. Join us, and that is, of course, Adam Keith. How are you doing, mate? How are you guys doing? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Um, your assessment of the weekend, obviously, or the last week, obviously, two points in the last six on the, off the back of a stretch of twelve wins in a row is not what you wanted. But um, that's as I said. You know, to be fair, no team wins forever. Yeah, I actually thought um, I, I didn't dislike our game, our effort. In all three of the games, I thought um, but our execution wasn't there in all three games, if, I, if I'm honest. Um, and I think that – but I thought that we, we were controlling a lot of the possession in all three games as well, which is good to see when we're not on our best game that we're in those games. Um, not every game is going to be um, some of the games that we've experienced in the last eight weeks where we've controlled the majority of the game and we've, we've built on a big lead and it was a very comfortable win for us. Those are not always going to be the case. And we need to work, we need to learn to, to win the games that we're down in. Um, I've always said championship teams find a way to come back and win games where they're maybe not at their best in the first period and they give up a couple goals. You got to fight your way back and you got to win tight games. You know, that's, that's playoff hockey and, and essentially, you know, from now on, we're, we're in playoff hockey. Um, that's the way that this league works. So, you know, we're going to have to win some ugly games and we're going to have to win uh, the games that we play well. I'm confident that we'll we'll hopefully win those ones comfortably. But, you know, there are going to be games where we're going to be stressed out throughout the game. We need to learn how to win those ones and stay calm throughout it. And I was very happy with the guys on Sunday to get that job done in Guilford because it certainly they put us under a lot of stress with their speed. Um, and obviously it was a tight game. That being said, I, I didn't think we gave them a ton as well. So, um, and when we did give up a couple opportunities, Besco was there to make the save. So, you know, that's, that's very common for our group. You, you had a, there was a very blunt um, post-game interview on Saturday after the game against Cardiff, where you were very part of how you said, you know, there's no excuses here. It just didn't get there. You know, the attitude in the room was the same. Was the fact that the guys just wanted to get back on that scoring run, and there were no excuses for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the excuses, I suppose, are, you know, I'm sure we probably hit a wall of fatigue, but it, you know, you can say that's an excuse, but it's, it is no excuse because every team's going to go through it. Um, you know, with all the midweek games and all the postponements, we're, we're all going to have to make up games. We're all going to have busy schedules. So um, there is no excuse, you know, whether or not that that was the cause of maybe it hit a wall. It felt like we hit a little bit of a wall in Cardiff where we lacked that energy that we normally have. And certainly the energy that we would have needed to, to get back and um, build the lead on, on that Cardiff game. You know, but if you do take a, that Cardiff game, I didn't think we gave them a ton either other than our mistakes. And, you know, sometimes those mistakes cost you a game and they did. We were talking earlier on about 
injuries and such and, and goody going out of the game, how much of a factor is that? And then you're having to jumble lines and then other lines that are a bit set have to jumble as well, just to make up for, for one guy going down during a game. Yeah, it's not it's not ideal, especially goody is the, the a part of that line when we're struggling to score a goal and how good offensively that line has been for us. Um to get when we're, when we're trailing a game, you know, obviously we want that line to get as many opportunities as possible. But, you know, I think that throughout this season, we, we've we obviously faced a lot of adversity with, with bodies uh, being out of the lineup, be it from injury or COVID. Um, so I think that we've kind of built that next man, next man up mentality within the group. And, um, you know, the ability to have Kieran Long and Mark Garside float around the lineup throughout a game, that has served us uh, massively. You know, those are utility pieces that they've become that are very valuable in those moments when, you know, we lose somebody and you know, to be able to say uh, longer jump up front or jump back and there's no, you know, he's never upset about it. He just does it, he does whatever the team needs from him, and, and he's done a great job either way, and, and as has Mark Garside whenever he's called upon to come up forward. Adam, I want to touch on your first couple of years, three years of coaching, and how you think you, know, you yeah, how you think you've improved with regards to your temper um, and regard your, you know, not so much – uh, you do feel, to me, you seem a lot calmer on the bench than what you maybe would have been. Okay, we know that referees don't get it right all the time and we're not having to go at referees because, as Davey says, they're an integral part of the game. But um, you seem to be a lot more relaxed on the bench now um, compared to what you were maybe in season one. Would that be a fair enough comment or am I talking crap as usual? Well, my memory is not great, so I, I don't <laughs> I've know noticed that in season one, but um, it is something that I certainly want to remain calm for our group on the bench. I think that there are certain times in games and, or certain times throughout the season when I do need to show a little bit of passion, a little bit of energy on the bench to kind of either make a point to an official, an official, or make a point to the, to our group. Um, but you know, there's times for that, and there's also times for a little bit of calmness back there, and I think that that rubs off on the group as well. Not to not to jump into a panic, and not to have everybody, you know, riled up to a point where we take it, we take a stupid penalty. Um, you know, so there's a fine line of of passion and, and energy behind the bench, and also calmness, and uh, I guess in the heat of the moment. So I, I'm trying to find that. Uh, I'm still not the best at it, but. I'm just uh, I'm trying to get better at it as with every game. Uh, you're actually more terrifying when you're quiet and angry, just for the record. But <laughs> uh, coach, we were having a chat earlier uh, just about uh, pulling the goalie. Uh, it was something that I kind of noticed this season, I guess, more than others. Um, but, but you, I think you're probably the most aggressive in the league in terms of when you pull the trigger on, on icing that extra skater. Um, can you talk to me a, a bit about that decision or, or where it came from? Is it something that you had in your career down the line? Or, or, or is it a conscious decision to kind of to go early to, to try and, and, and kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm referring to obviously uh Besco coming off with kind of three plus minutes left um oh. in where where were we Cardiff. 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 um they, what, where does that come from for you well I've watched a lot the NHL and obviously watched my brother and um how they go about things and um other coaches in the league and just to see you know it's usually a, a, a timing thing um but you also need to understand that there's a sometimes a coach has a feeling about his team on the night you know and um so it depends on the flow and the momentum of the game it depends on possession um a lot of those things and uh, although we were down we were down two goals that's a big factor in cardiff mm -hmm. uh, we needed to get two back not just the one right so um that's a big factor in why we got him out with Oh, just a little over three minutes, I think it was. Um, but also, we had great possession, and I felt like we had possession for a couple of shifts prior to that. So, you know, we had some momentum on our side. So, we, you know, we, getting him out with three minutes allowed us that opportunity to try to uh, at least get one back maybe and then be able to get him back out again. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. But, 
I guess, you know, we didn't concede concede one until late, you know. So it, yeah. all these little all these little special team situations throughout the game, you know, if we it didn't work out for us, but you know, that that maybe that three minutes will pay off at a big time later on in the season, you know, that there's no practice like a game. So um the ability to have that under our belt, those three minutes of, of playing six on five and keeping possession. Um Hopefully, the guys feel a little bit more comfortable the next time we we face that. Yeah, uh, just to come back to you, Joel, on something that we were talking about earlier, there, uh, it's the the opportunity then of a coach when they get a power play. Of course, Guilford Flames had a very late power play against us, one goal down, and decided to keep Linda's Cog and Nets, and you know, forego the opportunity. So probably, coach, you were probably expecting Linda's Cog to come out there and be facing six on four. Yeah, I was. Um, I was. Probably expecting a little earlier than it, than it happened, and expecting, um, you know, to go for it at that, them to go for it at that moment. Um, you know, I'm sure that given their power play has been struggling, uh, I think it's low 15. percent I'm sure that Paul in Paul's mind, he wanted to make absolute sure that they had full possession before he got that goal yet, because then you know, you're giving up the two goal lead as opposed to. And you kind of killed him the game, I suppose. So I think he that was probably his mindset. Um, you know, uh, I was happy he didn't pull the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know, so it, it, it goes both ways. And like I said, I, I think that those types of decisions, <coughs> maybe the coaches gut instinct on the night on how their team is playing or how in that instance how their how their power play was doing right if you're if you're constantly giving up possession on a power play or making bad choices on the power play you could see how he would be a little bit hesitant to take the goalie out we've had 20 responses to the call out for uh for questions we're not going to go through all 20 i'll take a select few but thanks to everybody who sent in questions to ask the coach uh i'm going to start with alex mclaughlin who said what's the biggest attribute you look for in a player when you and steve sit down to recruit the team at the start of a new season i mean obviously their their talent their skill their work ethic are all massive parts of what we're looking at um i would say the number one is is their character you know what type of people are they are we going to be able to spend eight months with them are they going to disrupt the locker room are they going to fit into our culture here in belfast and with the giants and what we do within the community those types of things matter and uh, one of the things that i've always kind of uh, made sure that i hold myself accountable to is you know the first season i started out is you know surround yourself with good people and usually good things happen um so we're trying to do that here you know that's part of the building that type of culture that uh we have that type of dressing room that enjoys being at the rank they enjoy being with each other and i enjoy having them uh it's <laughs> a long season if you have some guys you don't enjoy having around so uh we certainly want to make sure that they're good people we're bringing good people here to Belfast. Donate for Dahi, of course, been coming along to a lot of the games. What a I star. Mean, real part of it, what a real star. And the, the ask, uh, the Giants do unbelievable, following on from what you just said, actually, the, the Giants do unbelievable work in the community. How important is that side of the game to the players? I think it's massive. I think you know, when I first came over here, it was made pretty evident to me in, in terms of how important Belfast is to it, both sides of the community and especially here in Belfast. And, I think it's important that our guys understand that from from day one and it's another i guess another branch of why we bring in good people because they're usually looking to actively get into the community as opposed to trying to avoid maybe community um outreach programs the, our guys are trying to actively uh, participate in them and that's that's important going forward we know that um there's a little added motivation or a little added uh, responsibility to wear the Belfast Giants jersey here in Belfast. So I think it's important that our players know that. And one more from Steve, who says, arguably the focus for most hockey players throughout the world is the playoffs. Is it tough to change their mentality when they come here to a different structure, such as with the importance in the league, as well as a different playoff structure? Um, it is, yes. I, you know, I know that firsthand from coming over here. You know, sometimes their tendency 
back home in the North American League or I guess any uh, any other league in the world. Um, but specifically back home in North America, when you have a, a three and three weekend or you have four and five nights, um, some of the tendency is that, you know, if you win the third of three or the or the fourth of four and five, that's a bonus. You're almost kind of going in expecting to lose that one, hoping yeah. to win it, as opposed to going into a three and three here, knowing we got to win all three. And um, it's that <clears throat> mindset that when you're not feeling your best, you still got to find a way to help the team and try and win. I mean, it's it's that type of mindset that ultimately will, will keep you competitive and keep you consistent throughout the season. And that's the team that wins, right? So. It is hard to get everybody uh, to understand that. Um, the sooner you do, the better off your team uh, becomes in, in the long run. And I think uh, you know having s- some early defeats or some early adversity helps with that as well. Coach, we're um, we're back home this weekend. Are the boys excited about getting back in front of the Odyssey crowd again? Yeah, I think the guys love playing in front of the, the Giants fans. I think our, our record uh, proves that as well. Um, you know, they come in, uh, they want to put on a show for our group. And, you know, I, I can usually tell within the first five minutes of a hockey game how we're going to be for the entirety of the game. It doesn't mean we're going to win the game, but, it, you know, if we come out and we're skating and we're competing on, on both sides of the puck, offensively and defensively, we're a very tough team to handle. Uh, you know, then it comes down to scoring some goals and, and keeping them out of our net, obviously. So uh, sometimes you play real well, but you can't put the puck in the back of the net. You run into a, a good goaltender or whatever it may be, a good special teams, and um, it doesn't go your way. But from the first five minutes, usually at home, um, a lot of the times I've been feeling pretty confident behind the bench. And I know that uh, not asking for any major updates on injuries but obviously goody going out last weekend says was saying last week darcy's back doing a bit of skating you must be looking forward to the time when you can put a full team out this season i don't think it's happened if at all all season it would have happened at the start of the season i suppose but um i mean i certainly liked what i saw the very first uh game of the year before we lost ben lake i mean Uh, like half a game yeah, so um, I mean, it was, it was. Uh, I think that it, it allows us to play at a pace that may be uh, tough to match. You know, if we have that type of lineup, um, you know. But you know, we're just going go <coughs> by day here. We'll see how things work out with with Goody over the course of the week and how quickly he can get back on the ice and skating. And same thing with Darcy. We'll see how the, how he does this week in practice. You know, this is a big week of practice for him. This is our first week of practice really since probably before Christmas. I think we've had midweek games or, or COVID interrupt our practices for the last month or at least a month. So uh, we're looking, we're all looking forward to having uh, a good practice week here. Adam, I just want to touch on, we had a conversation there last week um, when Davey's already mentioned there about being down bodies and being down, um, you know, to, to play with basically three lines. But it's something that, you know, the boys seem comfortable with with playing with three lines as well. And sometimes they can actually play to your advantage because you don't have to take somebody out of the lineup and slot somebody else in. Um, what's your thoughts on, on the way the boys have been playing with such a, I mean, we're, we're still not halfway through the season. There's still a couple more games before we're actually halfway. So there's more games to play. Probably don't want to know this. There's more games to play than what we've played so far this season <laughs> itself. But um, what's your feeling on the way we, the things have been going? Um, taking into consideration, we had a really good stretch there for, for uh, December and the start of January. Yeah, I think three lines, when, when three lines are full of life and full of energy, um, they play real well. Uh, you know, because they're, I think they're getting out there. They're getting real good minutes. Everybody's out there. They know they're getting out there uh, every three shifts, and it, it's no longer a fight for some ice time. Um, so I think that that's part of the reason why you see some success there when we play well. The problem with just three lines is when you don't have three lines, or when that those three lines become fatigued. That's when you really miss that fourth line. You really miss um, the ability to to move things around and, and juggle some things uh, and also maybe get 
uh, an extra line, you know, an extra 30 seconds, 45 seconds rest. That's when you see um, the benefits of, of that extra line. And I think that, you know, given probably in, especially in Cardiff, I felt like we could have used another line. Um, you know, it didn't seem like we had the same jump in the first, in the second and third period as we did in the, in the first. Uh, Coach, I'm going to bounce just back to, to Twitter for one. Uh, it, it's sort of a, a theme throughout some of the questions. Uh, Daz Teal Tripper mentions it, and I think uh, my pal Johnny Baxter mentions it too. Um, uh, this is probably, uh, it speaks probably to the, the wider uh, changing of the game, and it's probably to do with who you were as a player as well, but they, they mentioned toughness, physicality. Um, Daz says, uh, do you think we're missing a certain type of player in the mold of Jim Vandermeer, Matt Dickerson, Bobby Farnham, or indeed yourself that brings a certain kind of physicality, disruption, blah, blah, blah? Or is the modern day game changing to a different set of tactics? Uh, and Johnny said, could have been argued earlier in the season that maybe the Giants lack that little bit of grit and toughness, but we see a lot more of it now. What changed? Do you think there still is a place for that in the game? What's your thoughts on having those types of players in, in, in the modern EIHL, modern kind of European hockey, whatever? Um, I think there's still a spot for those types of players. Um, I think the thing is they need to be uh, able to play and able to help the team in all aspects of the game. And I think you know, maybe what's changed a little bit is we've now gotten Ben Lake back in a lineup who's, you know, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve every single night. Yeah. Um, you know, you have other big bodies in the lineup, like Mark Cooper, you know, who plays very hard. And, uh, you know, there's, there's multiple guys in our team that play very hard. Um, I guess we, what we don't have is is a guy that's known for, for just for fighting and or for playing that way exactly. Um, but I think that our, our group, as we've been going on here, is becoming more and more of a team. And I think that when you become more and more of a team, you know, you want to have each other's back and you want uh, you want that guy beside you to have your back as well. So I think everybody kind of holds each other accountable and you know, we're seeing a little bit more team toughness. You see that uh, in any little scrums that we've had, you know, guys are not far behind. So you know, that's important just so, you know, we have that camaraderie on the ice and guys feel comfortable out there. And also, you know, they know that the next guy beside them is willing, willing to go to bat for him. Just a, a quick one, Patty, before you come there. But seen probably last, <clears throat> was it Friday night we played Cardiff at home? Can't remember, whatever night we played Cardiff at home. And you've got the likes of Sam Duggan going after Sam Roof, just trying to coax him into something. We talked about it in last week. So that's not a good trade-off for us. And especially when we're playing maybe a body or two short, it's not really the time for somebody to be getting involved in a in that kind of exchange. Well, I'm not sure exactly the, the time or the situation that you're speaking to, but I know from my own um, experiences that uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a time and a place. Um, I always struggle to find that time and a place. <laughs> but, uh, it's not you true. Know, it, it, uh, there are certain situations in the game where um, you know, you, you're looking to change momentum whether that be um, because of your own play or because of your your team's play or just something that's happened in the game. And that's usually when those things happen, uh, especially in today's uh, game. You're not really seeing those uh, just for fun fights, I suppose. So um, I think that uh, you know, there's certainly a time and a place for it. And, and you know, we want to continue to play physical and, and challenge our, 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 our team to be more physical and to be more competitive and it's only going to benefit us in the long run that uh, we're a tough team to play against we already know um when we're skating and when we're playing as competitive as we are we're a tough team to handle uh a little physicality i'm not on it we're only gonna fatigue teams and and uh, you know force more turnovers in the long run going to wrap it up here with two last easy ones from twitter coach and we really appreciate you coming on and giving us your time uh mick devaney coach do you miss daryl lloyd as much as i do oh man i miss daryl lloyd <laughs> <laughs> um yeah of course uh i know i've spoken to lloyd a few times over the last uh we actually just a little tip that i actually tried to sign him um during that, uh, when we got Boxy back, we almost had Daryl Lloyd back. Uh, but... I, I'm actually, I rather would not have known that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He was he was willing, but he had some things going on at home that uh, wouldn't make it work. But I thought that would have been great for the fans. And uh, I know what I would be getting from a Daryl Lloyd. I um, mean, it would have been you know, much like Boxy he came into his job and, and helped the team. And, and that's what we needed to get through that period. And the uh, and the last one from Alan Brett, just basically, how's fatherhood treating you? <clears throat> yeah, it's going. That's for sure. I'm I'm learning daily, <laughs> but uh, I can't complain. Um, my wife has has taken the brunt of it, and um, but it, it, it's been great watching her grow up, and uh, I'm still trying to learn it and trying to manage my time a little better uh, than I have in the past. That's for sure. What did you? Yeah, he had he had Coral on the ice last week. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was she was smiling, so that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a start. <laughs> what what age is she now, coach? Must be one. Uh ten months. Wow, well, good. Oh, fantastic. Well, listen, it must be tough going away and getting that time away and you know, trying to find that time to be with them when you have those away trips, but uh especially when you're trying to coach a hockey team. Yeah, all these days off that we have here after a, a tough weekend are they obviously go a long way. Um and then whenever I get home, obviously I have time to spend with them. So, um, you know, you can never have enough time with them, but uh, obviously cherish the time that I do. Good man. Good man. But listen, we really appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Obviously two games against the Coventry Blaze and then the following weekend, two games against the Cardiff Devils. We really appreciate your time, Coach. Yeah, yeah no much. problem, guys. Anytime. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys the weekend. Big thanks to Adam Keith for his time in the final agenda. Thanks to everybody who sent in their uh, questions. Like I said, we had 20, 20 odd replies in regards to the, the, the final agenda. Some of the biggest replies we've had of anything, obviously, with the opportunity to have the head coach. I was uh, thank you to everybody who sent in questions. Sorry if we didn't get to yours. We've only got a limited amount of time. Go on, Simon, do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, it, I've just listened to Adam there talking about his, his management of obviously with having the baby in the house and, mm. and doing all our bits and pieces. He never stops. Mm. I mean, he genuinely never stops. I was on the bus the last few weeks, but we went to uh, the uh, Fife game, and then we went to Glasgow last week. And all the time, the whole time, and on the ferry across, he's sitting looking at game tape, um, sitting putting notes together for the for the dressing room. Um, and then on the way up, there's two two hours and a coach the whole way up to Glasgow. Same thing. Um, so you know, if anybody tries to have a, I mean, I've seen there's been comments made. You know, when we were gotten a couple of a couple of defeats early in the season, people saying, you know, maybe it's time for a change. Get yourself ahead of wobble. Um, I've never seen anybody put. I mean, coaches, I, um, you know, that's you expect them to put their time in, um, but he genuinely does. He never ever stops thinking about it. And and obviously, you know what? And we look, like, Joel aside, we're all parents. You need to set aside time for your kids, and and it's important, you know, to to see them growing up. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's he's doing a brilliant job at that, and he's doing a brilliant job at uh, coaching our team as well. Here, here, I think you know you, you, the amount of time you have to put in as coach, and and you say about you know when there's a loss, you know people, you're always going to have people who just lose the rag at a loss. You have twelve wins on a row, and I see we get a loss, and people are screaming from high heavens about all sorts of changes that have to be made, and why have we played this player, and why are we playing that player? The best one, in fact, uh, and I know we're going to come to the news in a minute, but with Sheffield Steelers, obviously lost the Dundee Stars at the weekend, and I saw some Sheffield Steelers fans basically saying, "Well, that's the season in the bin then if we're going to lose to Dundee." <laughs> <laughs> Get up, just, just Twitter yeah. talk. Just Twitter talk. And as was pointed out earlier, you know, um, obviously the guys have a bit of a day off today, so Sam was unable to get anything from them at, at Dun at Dun Donald. So uh, hopefully we get something next week. Um, Joel, news. Yeah, uh, first of all, the Challenge Cup. We'll take a look at the Challenge Cup this week, boys. The semi-final matchups have been set. Uh, your Belfast Giants will have home advantage when they take on the Nottingham Panthers, who beat the Flames 6-5 on aggregate. Meanwhile, Cardiff make the journey to Sheffield. Uh, the Devils overturned a 4-2 first leg defeat with a 6-1 routing of the Dundee Stars last Wednesday, giving them a 6-5 win on aggregate. Uh, that's wrong. 6-4, 10-3. Yep. something like that they beat them anyway and the Steelers breeze past five by nine goals to three over the two legs uh, both games will take place on Wednesday the 23rd of February and there will be no second legs this year as teams agreed to play a one-shot semi-final to ease the congestion caused by uh, COVID rescheduling um, in the Premier Sports Elite League this past week the Glasgow clan got one over on your Giants with a 3-1 win at home as their midweekers continue to come thick and fast um, as you all know the Giants went on to lose 4-1 in Cardiff on Saturday before bouncing back with the same scoreline in Guildford on Sunday the 
Clan made it four points from four with another home win over the Manchester Storm on Saturday, winning that one 4-3. And stag somewhat staggeringly, it's probably fair to say, their six-point week was complete with a 2-1 road win over the Nottingham Panthers on Sunday. Um, elsewhere, there were Saturday wins for the Stars, beating Coventry 3-0 at the DIA. For the Steelers, who kept it rolling with a 4-2 win over the Panthers. And for the Guildford Flames, who recorded their first win in Scotland this season, believe it or not, with a 4-1 win over the Fife Flyers. Um, on Sunday, in what was, I would say, the upset of the weekend, the Dundee Stars made it a four-point weekend at home with that 3-2 victory over the league-leading Sheffield Steelers, halting a nine-game unbeaten streak, which is not that impressive, really, to be honest, uh, nine games. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. game winner there came from a player I've absolutely loved to watch this season, Charlie Coombs, in the 51st minute. Um, and finally, in the league, despite a 6-2 win over the Flyers on Sunday, the Coventry Blaze have sunk to eighth in the standings, thanks to Omar Pasha and what we will now call the Kay Burley effect. Um, if we take a look at the, <laughs> the standings, Paddy, do you have a, a wee graphic for me? I'd have a wee feel for you. Let me take a quick look at where we stand here at the almost halfway point, as Sis says. Um, it's getting tight at the top as the Steelers and Devils are now equal on points with 41. Crucially, the Steelers have played 25 games to Cardiff's 29. Uh, you can see the importance of that win in Guildford as your Belfast Giants trail by just three points with 26 played. The Nottingham Panthers have a bit of a hill to climb after their early season struggles, but now sit fourth uh, while the Flames hold on to that fifth spot. The clan's six-point weekend has done wonders for them, now up to sixth after 22 games played, but they're still in a playoff battle, which is getting pretty hot as Dundee, Coventry, and Manchester all sit within a point of each other um, around that dreaded eighth, pl eighth place cutoff, excuse me. And finally, the five flyers are rooted to the bottom with only six regulation wins from 25. Uh, and in your news this week, uh, I'm going to start tonight with, uh, similar to Adam Keefe dropping an exclusive, uh, it's, it's a hot news night, start with some breaking news. Uh, with only ten, <laughs> with only ten weeks left in the Premier Sports Elite League's regular season, the Guildford Flames have unveiled this year's <laughs> new home jersey. I saw that they brought a, they, 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 did a, they brought in a terrible video to show the unveiling with a, new yeah. shirt. Uh, a, a Windows Movie Maker teaser video um, that Awful. would have been a solid B minus in GCSE. Like, I'm bad at video, ACT. but I can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and obviously in, in a stunning departure from the norm it looks exactly the same so uh, any Flames fans listening make sure to get your orders in because you've only 10 weeks left I died laughing when I saw that that's just the, the most fantastic thing yeah. um, anyway uh, the EIHL's Department of Player Safety continue their extended Christmas holiday so nothing to report on that front um, Saturday's defeat to the Cardiff Devils saw another EIHL milestone as Josh Batch played his 600th game um, he says he had no idea at all about it until Mark Richardson told him he's seen his name in that article about Sully playing 400 uh, the other week. Batch sits sixth overall uh, in all-time list of British defensemen in the EIHL with four of the top six still playing. Um, so I don't know, do we offer our congratulations to Batchy on 600? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a massive achievement for anybody. There you, there you go. You just, you just never know. Um, and finally, uh, Pride Tip. The founders of Pride Tip were overwhelmed by the response to EIHL's Pride Week and had some pretty lovely things to say. Um, Jeff McLean, creator and co-founder, said, thank you so much for including Pride Tip in your incredible Pride Week celebration. We believe what you all have done in the EIHL is world class. Um, both Dean Petruk, who co-founded the company, and I are blown away by all of your efforts and are proud to have been included. Uh, that's your news, Paddy. Thanks very much. Um, we're rattling through the show this week. Fixtures this weekend. Our uh, Belfast Giants are at home for the first time in just over a week to the Coventry Blaze. I think you're back behind the mic. This is about two weeks off, two and a half weeks off. Um, I something like that. Do you remember how to do it? I should find out. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Giants are at home to to the Coventry Blaze on Saturday at seven p.m. at the SSE Arena, and on Sunday at four p.m. at the same venue. Of course, get yourself down there, and if you can't. Giants TV will take you through all of the action. Any other business, boys? I was going to come back when Joe was talking about the news there, and for some reason, Dops again on the missing list. I think me and Simon looked at an incident in the last kind of couple of minutes of the Coventry game. Simon, who was it? Yanni Lackinen. Yanni Lackinen got a five-plus game. Five-plus match. Five-plus match. Oh, so he's suspended for the next game. Five-plus match yeah. for... It was probably high-sticking. High sticking, yeah. Uh, high sticking across checking anyway, but he, he two hands. <laughs> now it, the fella, he, he, I don't even know who he did, but he gets lucky because he gets him across the back of the shoulders, but up quite high towards the neck. Whatever goes on, he just pff, have that across the back. Obviously, gets the, the, the have what, Davey? What 
How about? <laughs> How about? <laughs> Have to do that when I'm doing a taekwondo now. I mean, you know, got to make sound okay. effects or it doesn't doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, just, I've, just, I've just sent the clip to Patty and, and uh, the WhatsApp group. You can have a look at it and let me know what you think. But we'll we'll see if Patty, uh, if we if we fill for just about like the next 10 seconds, Patty maybe has the ability to just uh, throw that up there. But um, what, yeah, watch that's a hot take is created. Uh, yeah, can you, Patrick? If you can fill, I can hold, try. Just hold, hold it up in front of that thing. <laughs> That's so we're, we're well, at, yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no. Do it, do it, do it for real. Oh, Not super. I'll see if I can do um, it. Because it's only like a three-second clip. Um, I I cut it right down to just the the action. Not nothing leading up to it. Nothing after. Just a. Um, <laughs> We see we've got all the show done in an hour and ten, so we're in housing territory now. This is all this is for the next ten minutes. So we had the Valoran Neen incident from the week before, which got a two minute minor penalty. And it's it's not as bad as the Ben Lake one, but it's not a kick in the knee off it. And um I don't know, Dave. I mean I I honestly thought that was a suspendable hit. He hangs oh I'm not disagreeing yeah. with that. But you've got you've got Laker took the five plus game plus two game suspension versus two minutes. For yeah, fairly similar, and you've got this. He's he's obviously taken the one game. Dobbs haven't looked at it. Certainly haven't came out and said. Oh, the perimeter on a. Let me just take that. See what we got. Boom! Have that. <laughs> oh, <psh. laughs> Boom! Have that. <laughs> one more. <laughs> Boom! Have that. Um, so <laughs> you can you can you can see that. He's 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 been quite lucky because he, he's lost the he's seen seen red there and he, he's he's turned around and had the high slash stroke, um high stick across the shoulders the guy a couple of inches higher up you're in big 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 trouble there um and any boys want to say anything about that before go on yeah I mean I think again when you look at it, it, it the more you look at it, it, it to be honest I don't think it looks that bad but yeah in saying that there's I think there were six one or six two up at that point. Um, five are, are finding it really difficult. I mean, it, it's um, you know, the, I think it's eight in a row they've lost. I, I can't remember if Joel said that a few minutes ago, but you know, we, when you're losing that, you, you want something to galvanize your team. You see that happen to the team yet. I'm jumping in there, like I'm if I'm on the ice, I'm jumping straight in there to knock a bag at them. So, you yeah. know, I just think it's I think it's a bit embarrassing that way. Um, but just to touch on something, Debbie, we, we talked about um, you know, abuse being handed out to. To um to coaches Dalton. and players Andy and Dalton, yeah. and and Andy Dalton last week and I seen um comments being made about Todd Judium uh, this week after another loss and I see to be honest the guy involved is it actually made me sick to the stomach yep. um to think about what he wrote was is absolutely bang probably one of the worst comments I've seen from a hockey so called hockey fan um having a go at at um. The family of 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 Todd Dudium. No, and I think it's absolutely yeah, it's sickening. absolutely disgusting. Obviously, Todd Dudium threw a bit of tragedy in his life with regards to what happened in the past. The comments yeah. that have come were disgusting. I think I believe Fife have taken action as well. Well, do you know what? That uh, shouldn't be just Fife taking action. Any ice rink in the the UK should not let that guy anywhere near the place if they can help it. It's a mm-hmm. bloody disgrace what he said. I'm telling you, I see if he said it against my somebody in my family. I'd be going hunting for him because he's buying out of the order. Absolutely mm-hmm. buying out of the order. And, you know, as I say, hopefully Fife never – he's supposed to be a Fife Flyers fan. And, yes, they're losing games and they're not playing very well. Um, but there's absolutely no – you know, there's no part of any of what he said um, that should be anywhere near ice hockey or any sport. Um, or, you know, having verbally abused or, or you know, the way he commented, it honestly made me feel sick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping he never gets a null in the UK at all. It's absolutely a bang out of order. Absolutely disgusting, mate. I have to totally agree with you. And that I, you know, it was sent to us the other day, and I was just like, couldn't believe that somebody could stoop so low to do something like that. You know, Todd Dudium you know, is a fantastic guy who's been very good to us here in a view from the bridge. And he's been such a stalwart of that Five Flyers team as a player and a coach, you know, and, and what, he, what he's given to that organization. And yes, things may not be. Things may not be going as well as they want, but then those same fans should remember the times of going to the playoff finals and and, and some of the great games that those teams have played under Todd Dudium, some of the achievements they've had under Todd Dudium. And uh, it, it just goes to show that sometimes when the when the emotions of the game get to you, some people can deal with it and some people really can't. And that's I it. Know, okay. and what the, the, as you say, Paddy, it's absolutely disgusting. I, I couldn't... 
I couldn't believe what I was reading. It's just absolutely sickening. Uh, anything else for you, boys? Just sure. one other. And just when Joe was talking about the likes of, of bats and stuff coming up in 600 games, I know we're not an NHL podcast and the likes of the Door 14 boys and stuff cover NHL stuff, but I was just reading this morning, Keith Yandel, 974. It was easy. Cool FM, 974. Um, games in a row. I think that's what they called it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call it the Cool FM night. All right. Um, 900 equals a record. And I've seen a lot of fans saying it's ridiculous that they're just keeping him in the uh, in the lineup until he breaks his record and then we'll gas him. But we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But they play nearly a thousand games without missing a single game. Unreal. I think, it, Unreal. I, think it, it, I read it earlier on. It goes back to March 2009. <laughs> That's mad. That's insane. Like, yeah. Like 12 years yet, he you know, some some record like, Isn't but it saying that in March 2009, he was a player, mate. Oh, he was. Do you know what? I, I, can't, can't was the name of the guy. I can't remember the name of the guy that he was playing on a line with, but the, the tweet basically read, um, along the lines of uh, the last time, um, that Keith Yandel missed a game, the guy he was playing on defense with, I honestly can't remember his name, was eight years of age. That's he was eight yeah. years of age, so that's 30, 12 years ago, whatever it is. It's just insane. Um, and and do you, know, do you know what I was really surprised at? It's you would look at um Phil Castle. Phil yeah, Castle's not far away from him, I think he's uh, 940, he's not far away from him. And yet a lot of you know, look at the the, the flack that he's had to take down the years, both at in, in um, Arizona and, and Pittsburgh, and obviously Toronto and Boston. It's 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 unbelievable that he's basically he hasn't missed a game and about the same time, just shorter the same time than Yandel. Yeah, the wings almost had Yandel just when Lidstrom was retiring, but yeah, stupid contracts handed out that like Johan Franz and stopped that happening. But <laughs> do, you happen. do you ever hear the story of the baseball player Cal Ripken Jr.? I'm and not his, really sure about this rounder stuff, but go on. And his but he had so he holds the the baseball the, the all time um streak for consecutive games played which is of course baseball you play a lot more so the streak is 2632 consecutive games right it was previously held by, three weeks <laughs> it was previously held by lou garrick and he was on of yankees family he was he was on his way to breaking that record and uh he was on his way to the game and he realized it was, it was, i think he was about 10 games short and he was on his way to the game and he realized he'd forgotten something so he drove all the way home only to find his wife in bed with somebody else that was the rumor. The also rumor that she found his wife in bed with Kevin Costner, and that he absolutely beat the living daylights out of him. And then called the the stadium to say, "Listen, I'm not going to make this game. He's ten games short of breaking Lou Gehrig's record." And there was a mysterious uh, there was a mysterious uh, power outage at the stadium, and the game got cancelled. <laughs> and he went we on to break the record. So a, far down the rabbit hole here. A, a, like, Send he me. Send me that guy's name. I'm going to read about that later on. After I Cal, get done. Cal, now it's it's deemed to be a myth that it was Kevin Costner. It's deemed to be a myth, but that's the story. And it was uh, Cal Ripken Jr. 2,600. I'm going to ask Kevin Costner. You going to you ask Kevin Costner? Davey, he was in bed Davey's, with Davey's digging in. Davey digs into everything. He's been he's trying out some really vital information. Oh, oh here. You've got we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll just we'll not share too much, but obviously when yeah. Mark Cooper signed for the Belfast Giants, he had sort of some semi knowledge that he might have had some Northern Ireland genealogy, some Northern Ireland history in him. Um, so we've been being says we've been doing a wee bit of digging. I've done nothing. I've done nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Done <laughs> well, you've helped you with names and you, you've you've helped with names and dates and stuff. You've you've liaised between the Cooper family and stuff. <laughs> um, I've got Rhonda McClure and Boston on it now, and we oh, yeah. find that. We're 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 very very confident that his family hails from just outside Ballymena and says I think it's going to take him up there. We we'll find the family in like the nineteen oh one, the nineteen eleven census. They moved to Toronto. We we'll find them in nineteen twenty one. They're staunch. We'll love them. And uh, you know, <laughs> well, wherever you are this weekend. <laughs> no, but um, Ballymena man, what a night of exclusives. But um, there is some really. It's, Genealogy is so interesting, and it's just a shame that there's not more. The internet is an unbelievable place for finding out information and, and stuff that Joel looks at too. But um... <laughs> <laughs> I know you're. He can't, know Joel, he can't do it, but he's in his mouth, so he's either. We know Joel. This is a, listen. <laughs> exclusive, no, exclusive. But um, no, you not said at the start something about. Um, 
<laughs> I can't remember what it was. Something but stands for stuff. That is unbelievable. Don't, don't know what we're talking about, Joe. But yeah, so we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna continue we're gonna continue that uh, genealogy search for Mark Mark Cooper and see if we can somehow <laughs> tie up a little bit. Why he's still here? I'm not sure what his contract situation. Whether Coops is here for two years or one year. If he's only here for one, we've got a really short amount of time to try and get this tied off. Hopefully, he's here for two because it's a brilliant story. It's, that sounds absolutely brilliant, mate. That's some amount of work to get all that sort of research. It's great when you get players like that coming over and actually finding something behind them as well. You yeah, know? I want to. I want to almost send yeah. him home with look. This is this is this is your family. Well, yeah. well done. Yeah, he me, oh. I, I, because I was sort of liaising in between Coops. His dad and, and Davy. Um, I just said, Look, Coops, there's Davy's number. <laughs> Davy's going to give you a call about this. I said, hey, You two can find it over, you know, basically get all the information. And the next day, I was on, that was last Wednesday night when we were on our way back. Literally, we're, we're getting on the ferry. It was really, really tight for the journey back from Glasgow to the ferry. We're getting on the ferry, and Davy texts me. Um, and you know, I get it. You know, when you read a text, you're sitting going, You know, you can actually sort of hear which way he sent it. David was proper excited when he was sending this text. Mm. Um, and when I got it through, I showed it to Coops, I sent the information to him. And then the next morning, I bumped in the guy was going to a meeting in town, and I bumped in the Coops who was going for breakfast um, in the city centre with his girlfriend. Um, and he said, You're not going to believe us. Dave, David's done a family tree for me already. And I'm going, All right, okay, very good. And then, like, about 10 minutes later, he sends a text through to me basically, with that family tree. So, uh, and I know. Coops and his mum and dad are absolutely ecstatic the way things are going. They wanted to thank Davy. So um, but it's is it's it's unbelievable. And again, you know, just if it's like digging for a bone, give it a Davy, he'll find your yeah. bone for you. Well, that's what you get from a view from the bridge. You get hockey, that's you it. get crack, and you get genealogy. genealogy. What more do you want from yeah. that? Hey? The genealogy like, are it, with the view He's from made it sound a bit better there, saying I've done a family train. Well, I wrote it out with black marker on the back of an old drawing. So it's just, I think it's it's yeah, it's rudimentary. Well done. <laughs> Be interested to see where, where, where that ends, Davy. Keep us up to date and we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, if that's it, boys, we'll wrap things up for this week. We've got nothing left at this point. <laughs> the, uh, we'll kind of stress it for 20 minutes there. <laughs> that's it, the, uh, obviously, the Belfast Giants take on the Coventry Blaze this weekend, Saturday, 7 p.m., Sunday, 4 p.m. at the SSE Arena. Get yourself down there. Get, get yourself in there. Uh, I believe alcohol might be served this weekend. Yep, we are back. back. We are We're back. back. Yeah. Booze is I, back I, at I, games. I think I might. I think I might start the uh, webcast with a pint. <laughs> yes, yes. Says, can I come on <laughs> and join you? Booze is I'll back shot, at like games. Shotgun one together. Yeah. So get yourself a ticket. Get down there for the games against the Coventry Blaze. And if you can't get down there, you can always. Join Mr. Kitchen and his pint at the start of the game on Giants TV. Big thanks to Adam Keefe for, for joining us on the show. Big thanks, as always, to you three gents for joining us for a bit of hockey chat. Um, you can get us on at AVFTB on Twitter, on Facebook. You can, of course, get us on YouTube. And you can get Joel's new ASMR channel on YouTube, too. Lots of clicks. Periscope. Clicks. Like and subscribe, guys. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> 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 Kingdomofthegiants.com for all that information as well. Not the Joel ASMR stuff. You'll not get that there. Uh, and wherever you are this weekend, we hope you enjoy your hockey. And we'll catch you here next time. What a view from the bench. <laughs>